Hi guys, welcome to video five of the gases unit. This is actually the last video because this is the last section in chapter 10. This video is gonna be about real gases versus ideal gases and the conditions at which gases behave more like ideal gases versus um, when they actually are real gases and how we account for that. So an ideal gas conforms exactly to all aspects of the kinetic molecular theory that we talked about. So you have those assumptions of KMT. The ideal gas fits each and every one of those. But in the real world, ideal gases don't exist. Um, and that's because real gases do have attractions between the particles. They have intermolecular forces. And the particles have some volume. Even if it's not much, they still have some volume in relation to the container. Real gases behave ideally. So real gases exhibit ideal behavior when temperature is high and when pressure is low. So the reason that real gases exhibit ideal behavior when temperature is high is because the molecules have a very high kinetic energy. So the molecules are moving very fast, they have lots of energy, which means they actually have enough energy to overcome and any intermolecular forces that do exist. Um, and then they also exhibit ideal behavior when pressure is low. When pressure is low, we're talking about anything under about 10 atmospheres. Um, if it's under 10 atmospheres, real gases will behave ideally, and that's because the particles are so far apart um, that their individual molecules volume is insignificant in comparison to the container. Um, and then real gases behave pretty ideally at room conditions, which is why we can use the ideal gas law when calculating for any unknown variable at room temperature. So these are very important, right? Real gases exhibit ideal behavior when? That is extremely important. There's almost always multiple choice questions about that. So deviations from the ideal behavior. This just shows you um, the reasons with volume and with intermolecular forces. So the assumptions that are made in the kinetic molecular theory um, break down at high pressure because notice at high pressure, notice the volume of the container at low versus at high. Um, at low pressure, the volume that's unoccupied by the molecules is essentially the same as the container. At high pressure, that is no longer true. So at high pressure, when you're at a low container volume, your gas molecules actually take up more space in terms of the container. Um, and then at high temperatures, um, excuse me, when we look at low temperatures, let's say, um, the molecules should bounce off the wall. Um, but at low temperatures, it has a lower kinetic energy, so it can't bounce off as hard, which means each of the gas molecules around it will actually be pulling on it due to intermolecular forces. So at high pressure, it is a real gas, and at low temperature, it is a real gas. Because at low temperature, there's not enough energy to overcome intermolecular forces. So the most ideal gases have the weakest intermolecular forces. So if you're given a list of gases, you should be able to determine which one is um, the most ideal. So for example, um, let's just go through this list. We have helium, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Okay, these are all gases. Um, the most ideal has the weakest intermolecular force. So helium will actually be most ideal because it has no bonds at all. all right, it has no bonds at all. So that's the weakest intermolecular force. There are no forces um, between molecules right? because there are no molecules. They're just atoms. Um, and then nitrogen will be next because it's nonpolar. Those are the London or the dispersion forces. Um, CO2 is nonpolar, but it has polar bonds. And then the least ideal would be water vapor. Okay? It's polar, um, it hydrogen bonds, strongest intermolecular forces. So this is the least ideal. So we actually can go most ideal to least ideal based on the intermolecular force. The weaker the intermolecular force, um, the most ideal the gas is. Now, we also can actually correct the ideal gas equation when we have real gases. Um, the ideal gas equation can be adjusted to take the deviation of volume and pressure into account. 
So the pressure adjustment, this is called the Van der Waals equation. Um, you actually will not have to do any calculations with this, um, but you need to know why these constants are used. So in terms of pressure, a, the pressure adjustment is due to the fact that molecules can attract and repel each other because of intermolecular forces. So because real gases have attraction between the molecules, we use N squared A over V squared. So N is still moles, V is still volume, A is a constant. Um, a is actually a measure of how strongly the gas molecules attract one another. There'll be, I'll show you a table on the next slide that gives you actually the values of A and the values of B. Um, and then the volume adjustment, this NB, um, is due to the fact that molecules do occupy some space on their own. Um, and so because real gas molecules have an actual volume, we use N times B. N is the number of moles, B is a measure of the volume that's occupied by the molecules, and that equals NRT. So notice it's still the ideal gas law, P, V, NRT, but we have to take some deviations and some corrections into account. So with the Van der Waals equation, um, here again is the Van der Waals equation at the top. Here are the constants. So notice that every gas, the constants are different, and that's because every gas is different. No gas is the same. Um, so these would be the constants that you would use to plug in to the Van der Waals equation. Again, you're not doing calculations with this. Uh, what you need to know are how gases deviate at high temperature um, or at low temperature or how they deviate at high pressure versus low pressure, right? When do they behave ideally? Why do they behave ideally? Um, or why do they not? Okay, so this is the Van der Waals equation, just so you see it in case you see it in college. Um, but that is actually it for this video. Um, again, if you have questions, go back and read through section 10.9 to help you out. Um, make sure that you have taken notes and bring any questions that you have to class.